Good morning, traders. It is Sunday, April 7th, and it's time for our weekly recording. Before we get started, please make sure to click the subscribe button. When you do that, it increases my channel traffic and it allows me to reach a larger audience. That ultimately is my goal. That's why I'm putting all this information out each week. As a trader, it's really important to have a trading system. This one works been documented, been trading it for a very long time, and I'm trying to teach it to as many people as possible. And that's why the picks, week in, week out, day in, day out, perform. We're gonna take a look at our previous picks, see how they performed. If you go through the previous videos, you'll be able to see a very long-term track record that spans back to the financial crisis of 2008 on my YouTube videos. So please, click the subscribe button, what happened this week? Well, we've been waiting and waiting for the market to set up. We've been looking for trading opportunities and we've been relatively passive. We feel that a window of opportunity has been coming up for us, but we still have to wait to see that it's going to actually materialize. So TGT was a stock that I highlighted a week ago Sunday. And you can see how the stock is pulled back all week long. We had a set of instructions in place where we we're going to be waiting for an L or a M15 LRSI cross, and we're going to be looking for the price to be higher than the previous trough. Ah, what does all that mean? Well, let's go take a look at it. So I like the breakout, first of all, on TGT. Really like the fact that the stock was able to get through this horizontal resistance. I like this nice steady price action. It had been able to preserve most of the earnings gap. These are all positive developments for the stock. So I liked it, but we wanted to see how it would react during the week, and we didn't have a very good market tailwind. So we were going to be trying to buy a dip. And when we get these LRSI dips, we want each one of these troughs here to be higher in price. So if we had a trough here, and we had another trough here, we would want the price up here higher than this price point. If that had happened during this LRSI cross, which incidentally, please go into my YouTube channel. If you're not familiar with LRSI and how it works, it's an indicator we use. I've got a video on it. So this trough was lower than this trough in price. So there's really no reason for us to start getting long TGT. Also, if you came in Monday morning, you're all hot and bothered because Pete told you to buy Target and you came in and you bought it right out of the gate, you might have felt really good and really smart for about a half an hour or so and then the stock retraced the whole way. We don't need to rush into any trades right now. The market's just not there for us. We don't have that market tailwind. So we're kind of in a holding pattern, and we did have some developments this week, and I'll be talking about that in just a second. TGT, still kind of waiting for this trade to set up, and right now, don't see anything I really like. There is a trough right here. There's another trough right here. You can see how the stock is starting to make a higher low. Okay, so the low from this trough is right here. The low from this trough is right here. This is kind of what we're waiting for. All right, Target is starting to show us the pattern that we wanted. The market's not, but at least the stock is starting to show some signs of support. So what do I do? Click GTC. I'm gonna set an alert line, GTC, at the high from Friday. If the stock can get through it, and if I'm starting to see some signs from the market that tell me that the market's gonna start moving higher, I've got what I need. All right, the stock has dipped, it's pulled back. I like the D1 chart, everything looks good there. I've got this little support level right here on AVWAP E. Awesome, I got all the things setting up for a nice entry point. What I'm not doing is I am not chasing breakouts because I don't have that strong market tailwind. Wednesday, during a live event, I highlight, highlighted Micron. I like Micron in that live event. I said, listen, I love the fact that the stock gapped higher and it's been able to preserve the entire gap. 
And now, with a market that's really not going anywhere, what has the stock done? March, 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 higher. But during the Wednesday live event, I said, you know, I want to get closer to that EMA 8. I don't need to buy it up here. I don't need to chase because the market's not there for us right now. So I still like Micron. I like Micron on any kind of pullback as long as the market is stable. This stock has been able to continue to move higher even after that earnings gap. That tells me that institutions are in there buying it. They like this stock. I think there was a Barron's article a couple of weeks ago that said Micron is really coming out with some innovative AI chips. Well, glory be, that's the key word in this market, AI chips. Well, if you got those, you're going to have investor interest. And the reason that we know there's interest is just all you have to do is look at the price action. It's telling you that in a flat market like this, you've got a stock that's drifting higher after an earnings announcement. Would this be a good candidate for selling an out-of-the-money bullish put spread? Yes, potentially. If you can get down to that 107.50 level, you can see that's the low right here. That would be where the gap starts. You also have a couple of other support levels in here like AVWAP E. Sure, you could do that. And so if the market pulls back and stabilizes, you could get that type of a spread off. So I'm not gonzo about it because of the price action that I saw in the market this week. So now we're going to talk about the market. What did we get right? What did we get wrong? How do we adjust? What's our mentality? We had new information this week. The new information came in the form of a gigantic long red candle on Thursday. So the market had tried to get up to a new high. This was before the jobs report. Everything during the week had been coming out pretty decent. So we had uh, ISM Manufacturing, excuse me. ISM Manufacturing came out better than expected. ISM Services were just a little bit light. And then we had tons of Fed speak. And the Fed just kept pounding and pounding and pounding and pounding home the message. We are not ready to cut. We are not ready to cut. We are not ready to cut. We are not going to cut. Well, the market has been pricing in a rate cut, and they've been doing it pretty much since November. And that's when we saw this big liftoff in TLT. Well, since then, you can see how bonds have gradually been drifting lower because the Fed has said, don't expect a rate cut. So we can expect higher for longer. That's consistent with what the Fed has been saying to this point. And they just said last week, they still see persistent inflation. And the economy is as strong as it possibly can be. Job growth was over 300,000 in the last report on Friday. Wage inflation, 0.3%. Those are good numbers. That wage inflation number of 0.3%, that's the largest input cost for companies. That's a good thing because that would be inflationary if it was up around that 0.6 level that we saw back in January, which I believe that was due to lots of states, 22 states, I believe, raised their minimum wage in January. Well, that was a temporary spike. So now we're seeing... Wages come back down, they're more in line, but we have strong employment. We've got good economic numbers. That is good for profits. We're not gonna have the Fed easing anytime soon. So the backdrop from my perspective is still good, but yes, higher interest rates for longer are going to start keeping a lid on the action. And so what happened on Friday, by the way, this move lower in bonds I don't see this as being nearly as dramatic as what we saw last fall. And remember, we did have a bit of a market pullback from August through October last fall when we had this correction in TLT. The difference there was that the market had priced in a rate cut in September. The Fed didn't cut rates in September. They hiked rates. There could not have been a bigger disconnect in the market. And that is what resulted in some 
selling in the market back in October of last year, right here, was the low in October. And you can see the pullback that we had that coincided with TLT. So I'm not looking for anything like this because we don't have as big of an adjustment. What you'll also notice during this pullback is very stubborn price action. So yes, we get a pullback and then a spike, and then a pullback and a spike, a bounce. This is not strong downward price action. Not with the height of these bounces and with the frequency of these bounces. So that was the tell back in here that we were gonna get a big release higher. So this was bond related. Bonds are pulling back, but I'm not expecting to see anything close to this because institutions are a little bit wiser and they didn't get it quite as wrong. Okay, so the Fed might not be cutting in June. They might not be cutting in July, but they certainly aren't hiking rates. We have the CPI coming out this week. Again, the Fed saying that they're concerned about inflation We'll see how that number comes out this week. CPI hasn't had as big an impact recently because everybody's been watching inflation come in, contract, contract. Who knows? Maybe the Fed is signaling that they see that there's going to be hotter inflation. Maybe that's why we saw some profit taking here. When you see a long red candle like this, it is a warning sign. This is a scar, if you will. And it tells us to be very cautious. So going into this, let's talk about what my mentality has been. And you know this from my videos. If you watch them every week, then you know that since this part of the rally in here, this was back in January, February, the price action has been very choppy and you can see how this earlier momentum is starting to kind of wane. We've got a more of a horizontal move in here and it's been patchier. You can also see all the red candles that are lining up in here. Well, what does that tell us? Is it bearish? Not necessarily. It just tells us that the selling pressure is starting to build a little bit. There's a little bit more profit taking. We're no longer in go, go, gotta have it mode. So that means that we stop being as aggressive with our swing trades. Those that we took back in here when the market was rallying, well, up in here, we start taking our gains on it because the price action is not as strong. So we go to the sidelines, we kind of see what's happening and we expect the market to be more range bound. When you're a directional trader, you're really looking to strike when the iron is hot. You're looking to strike when you've got these nice directional tight moves with very few dips and you ride them as long as you can. And then when the market starts to flatten out, it's starting to perhaps transition. Then you're just waiting for signs. Okay, show me one way or the other. What are you going to do here? Well, right now, this long red candle, and notice this is about so the ATR on the SPY has been about four points. The 20-day ATR is what I track. Thursday, we moved about $12 on the SPY. So that's about 200% more than the normal range. And you can see how this day engulfed almost two weeks worth of upward price action, this little float higher, fairly light volume during it. You can see a little bit of volume coming in here. That was window dressing, end of quarter. Yeah, this is a very nasty, hard day of selling. But Pete, we've seen other red candles like this off of a relative high, and those have reversed. See, see, look at this one. See how that one reversed? Okay. It's a valid point, a couple things in price action. One is that we've got this nice tight price action and you're expecting this to be raced right away. And it was, okay? And so we've got this long red candle, which was actually a Fed statement in here, immediately erased. But notice this candle here is not nearly as long as this candle. Well, why does that matter? Really? 
What difference does that make? Here's the difference that it makes. I'm going to take off the extended hours view. So Thursday, we come in, we get this nice gap up. Okay. We got to be careful on a gap up to a new relative high. <laughs> I've told you that many, many times. But the price action on the way down was very sloppy, tiny little candles. This told me that we're probably going to get a pretty decent little bounce in here. And I can put up 1 OP, and then you'll be able to see what that did. So in here, we do get a nice little bounce, and now we're trying to get through this high. Well, we're pretty cautious in here. We want to see this gap hold more than half the distance, which it did. We want to see it maintain the prior high, which it did. So this is all looking pretty good in here. And now we get this March higher, tiny bodied candles, but it's okay because we've got lots of consistent green candles. We wanted to see a breakout bar, which we got, but here's the key. And this is what I had mentioned in the chat room. So we're starting to get long in here. We like all this. We like that we're above the VWAP and we like that we're getting above the prior day's high. So this is all good. We're in, within striking distance of the all time high. So everything's good in here, but we can't get aggressive until we see follow through. We have to assume that these candles at the high of the day, these breakout candles are just a head fake. They're just trying to force some buy stops for anybody that had shorted in here. They're also trying to lure in bullish speculators. So we get this nice candle here and then we give that candle up. We're right at the open. I'm still okay with everything right in here. This is not a problem, okay? We're hovering near the all-time high. We've got a jobs report that's going to be coming out Friday. The jobs report should be good. Everything told us that the jobs report should be good. We've had initial jobless claims have been very low for the last four weeks. Okay, there's no warning signs in there. So we should get a decent number on Friday and we should get a nice move higher. That's what I was looking for. I mean, call a spade a spade. I'm going to go with what the price action has been telling me to that point until it tells me different. So we're starting to sell some bullish put spreads. We did some on Wednesday. We did some on Thursday. That would be the first leg of the strategy. And why? Why are we selling bullish put spreads? We still don't have confirmation of a breakout. No, at that point, we're still leaning on the D1 chart. And we're leaning on this very strong momentum. We've got a compression. We haven't really moved anywhere. This has given us time to digest gains over, over a period of a few weeks. We've got earnings coming up. Earnings should be excellent. Economic growth has been excellent. We should have a good jobs report. Awesome. So you start putting on your bullish put spreads here because when you get the move on Friday, now you're more folk the breakout, the upside breakout that we were expecting. Well, on Friday, you're not going to have time to put bullish put spreads on. And if we get that gap higher Friday morning, all of a sudden, those spreads that you were looking at that were fairly attractive, they're not there anymore because the market has moved higher. The stock has moved higher. The market makers are more stingy on what they'll give you for selling bullish put spreads. So you want to get those trades off ahead of time, and those are neutral to slightly bullish, and they are out of the money. We've distanced ourselves from the action. We're taking advantage of time premium decay, something that we're going to need to do when these tiny bodied candles don't give us much of an intraday range to day trade from. So that's how we generate income. And Friday, if you came in and you had five or six or eight different bullish put spreads that you wanted to put on, all of a sudden they're not there. And now you're looking at them, you're pecking around, you're trying to get a credit, they won't fill me, I'm trying to get a credit, I got uh, two different strike prices that I'm having to navigate, I got different expirations. Uh, all of this is taking time. You don't have that kind of time because if you came in 
Friday morning and you're getting that gap higher and you're getting that breakout to a new high, folks, it's go time. This is time to be aggressively long. You get the breakout and then you look for follow through and the next leg higher. You are focused on short term trades, getting my stock positions off, getting some call debit spreads off, possibly if the price action indicates that you're getting a bullish trend day because the market makes two steps higher, one step back, one step back, two steps higher. So this would be your go moment. And you want to focus on those types of trades Friday after the number if you get that really bullish reaction that you're looking for and that breakout to a new all-time high with a bullish trend day. That's what I was expecting. And I was expecting it because of all of this strong, strong price action and this compression. The market's waiting, waiting, waiting for a catalyst. We got earnings season coming up. Everything looks good. So Thursday, we have new information. Oh, gee, Pete, you really messed up this time. You were out there putting on bullish put spreads and the market sold off. Those bullish put spreads are still in great shape, okay? Bull markets die hard. Are all of these buyers from November through March, are they just going to throw in the towel all of a sudden and go, nope, don't like it anymore, sell everything? No, they're not going to do that. You're going to have a retest. Try and make a breakout. Try and make a breakout. Try and make a breakout. Try and get through. We still got earnings coming up. Everything's still intact. Tick, tick, tick. Those bullish put spreads are out of the money. If we sold them on really good stocks, they're going to expire worthless. We stay inside of a four-week window. So we were looking to sell those three or four weeks out. Those positions are still in great shape. The only reason that you would have gotten pounded in here is if you were aggressively long call debit spreads and you were too early to the game looking for a breakout on Friday and if you were loaded up on stock positions, which you should not have been. I haven't been advocating any of that. I've been saying we just need to get through this period here. We need to wait for a dip, wait for a bounce, wait for a breakout. We need to have that strong market tailwind before we start jumping in again and we don't have it right now. So here's the tall and yes conditions have changed. So now we start breaking below this compression here we lose the previous high and the market starts coming down. We also have a bearish 10p cross and I'll expand the study so you can see it a little bit better. Right in here, right about in here, this is where I warned everybody in the chat room. I'm like, okay, everything to this point has been okay. We're kind of compressing before a big number. And we're okay with everything to this point, but you gotta be careful in here with your day trades, okay? We're getting long in here. We're looking for an opportunity to add. You probably, if you're in the right stocks, they've been moving higher. You might have some profits. You might be able to scratch them. But you know, we're back below VWAP. We've got a bearish 1OP cycle. We're near the low of the day. You know, if this cracks down, we're going to at least fill in this gap here. Gap up to a new relative high. Danger. Well, this drop. I did not expect this drop. No, I didn't. But I also am not overly exposed. So now I sit back and I watch and I start seeing these stacked red candles like this. That gets my attention in a big hurry when it comes on massive volume. Big volume. Relentless selling. So if you look at the high, which was right around, uh, call it 524, and you take a look at the low, which was about 513, call it, that's a 110 point move in the S&P 500 futures. That is substantial 
that gets my attention. This is not just some mamby-pamby programs, let's flush everybody out. This is some legitimate selling. So there are institutions out there saying, you know, I'm going to lighten the load here. And there was all sorts of speculation that came out. I don't even listen to the news feeds. I just watch price action. So oil prices spiked and the conflict in the Middle East is blah, 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 blah. You know, I've seen oil prices at about $120 a barrel and higher. And I've seen a market rally. This is not oil related. Okay. Yeah, but FedSpeak said blah, 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 blah. Fed speak doesn't matter. Those guys have been talking that they are going to be higher for longer for many, many months. There is not one dang thing that they could have said that was inconsistent with that prior messaging. Well, Hamas, well, Ukraine, you can throw every other news story out there that you want, okay? That didn't cause the sell off. Institutions see this as a good level to start lightening the load to take some risk off. But why, Pete? But why, Pete? What do they see? What should we be worried about? It doesn't matter. All that we care about is that they're selling. Could it be that China's going to have a credit crisis? Well, China's economy has not been good, for sure. Europe has been struggling, so there's not a lot of growth happening there either. Interest rates are going to remain higher for longer. Eventually, that's going to weigh on consumers. With these large institutions, they've got their finger on the pulse. They can see what checking accounts are doing, what credit card balances are, what uh, defaults and delinquencies they have. They see everything. If they decide that it's time to take some risk off the table, this is what they do. And it's a warning sign. It left a nasty scar on the D1 chart. Oh, Pete must be getting bearish now. Yeah, this is the sign that the market's going to roll over. It could. Or we could recover this long red candle with a couple of green candles and we could march right higher on fantastic earnings announcements from mega cap tech companies. That's also another possibility. Oh, great. Well, now he's telling me he doesn't know what the market's going to do. Ha, bingo. That's right. I don't know what the market is going to do, but I have new information. And that new information comes in the way of some pretty dang aggressive risk reduction here. And so now I need to see how quickly this long red candle is erased or if it's erased. And so over the course of the next two weeks, we're going to start hearing lots of earnings announcements. We're going to be able to gauge what the profitability is. I think it's going to be pretty decent, but valuations are also pretty high right now. So what I'm going to be using is the high from this candle and the low from this candle as a gauge. If we try to get through this resistance and we get back up to this high and we see a breakout that turns into a bearish hammer, so everything's going higher, 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 we've got a new all-time high, but we get a big pullback and we finish near the low of the day, that's going to leave us with a bearish hammer. That's going to be confirmation of resistance that gets me a little bit more bearish. And back to my bias right now. Yes, I've been super go-go bullish in here. Yes, I was looking for a breakout to a new all-time high. Yes, I was looking for a good jobs number. Yes, I'm looking for good earnings. Yes, I'm leaning on all of this. But I've been patient in here, waiting for the next setup, waiting for that confirmation. I didn't get it. So when I see that what can I tell you definitively from that price action on Thursday? I can tell you that I am not as bullish. That's the takeaway. I'm not as bullish. If I was looking for the market to have a chance to maybe get up to 
530 5 area during this earnings season. Now I'm thinking, gosh, it might be lucky to get up to 530. It might even be lucky just to tread water because of that day. So am I bearish? No. Am I less bullish? Yes. Am I waiting and watching for signs that resistance might really be building here? Yes, I am. Absolutely. So if we start trying to get through to a new all-time high and we can't get through and we can't get through and we can't get through, that tells me that there is some stiff resistance here and that I need to go to a neutral posture. If we start breaking down below the low here and we see follow through selling, then I have to take a more bearish tone because finally we'll be seeing a decent dip. And I think that at minimum a decent dip is going to be coming. So we really haven't seen any big dips in all of this time here. And dips tell us that, okay, the upward momentum is starting to wane. So that's where I'm at right now as far as my market opinion and what I think could possibly happen. And I'm using this long red bar as an indication. Bull markets die hard. So... From a truly bearish standpoint, if I were, what gets me, what gets me really bullish? Not a lot after seeing this. Okay, I think that we've had a really good run. I think valuations are pretty stretched, and interest rates are going to remain high. So I'm looking for a, a decent little move higher at most, maybe up to 5:30 or 5:35 at most. I'm, I don't think we're going to get there, just based on what I saw here. That was heavy selling. Other institutions are going to recognize that. This is not a one-off little program type of thing. You can also see that on Friday, the market tried to bounce. It recovered half of this long red candle. That's good. Those of you who were over your skis, overextended on the long side, I would mentioned in my comments pre-open Friday, you are going to get a bounce. So make sure that you take this opportunity to reduce your risk exposure. Shouldn't have had a lot of longs on at this juncture. So this is your chance. If you're in the right stocks, maybe even make a little bit of money. If you've been long swing trades in here, you probably, well, you definitely should be making money on it, but reduce your risk in here. That's what institutions are doing. So as far as upside, I think it's going to be relatively contained after seeing this candle and on the downside what I'd be looking for is a little bit of follow through selling maybe down to the 50 day SMA which comes into play around 507 let's call it and then a drift higher that can't get through this resistance and then we pull back that would be a bit of a double top formation it probably would take a month for that to form Maybe in May, by the way, I am not in the sell in May and go away camp. I have not seen that work. So I think that's a cute little catchphrase, but I wouldn't put a lot of credence into that seasonality either. Price action tells me that we're going to see a lower high double top, then I'm okay with being short in here as well and maybe seeing a pullback to one of these major moving averages so we got to wait and see you know i had hoped for some resolution we're always looking for a window of trading opportunity we had just the most unbelievable window of opportunity in here to here for about three months through mid-february everything was great and then things started to get patchy and choppy in here so we had to kind of go to the sidelines and when you're a directional trader, which we are, you're not going to always have a go-go market to work with. You're always going to have go-go stocks that you can work with. And there are thousands of them to pick. So that's what we're going to be looking at. And I've gone through some searches. I'm going to show you a couple of features. I'm sorry that this is getting a little bit long-winded, but this is a very critical, critical juncture for the market. Okay. We have new information and oftentimes when you have new information and you get caught in a trade and you lose money in a trade, you take your hit, okay? 
you take your hit and you move on, oftentimes that new information is going to make you a lot more money than you just lost on that initial trade. And I'm going to give, give you an example here. So I like McDonald's. I liked it a few weeks ago for selling an out of the money bullish put spread. And so we sold the bullish put spread. We we're leaning on this AVWAP E level and the stock really hadn't been going anywhere. Right in here, we sold it. And now all of a sudden we're testing AVWAP E. Everything is good, okay, in here. It's just going sideways, which is fine. We're trying to generate some income on that. We're a couple days away from expiration. Blam! We get this long red candle out of nowhere. McDonald's came out and they lowered their guidance. They said, you know, we're not selling as many hamburgers anymore. So on that bullish put spread, I actually made money. I got lucky. So let's just say, you know what? It wasn't a bad trade, but the news release was very untimely. If it had come out three days later, spread would have expired. It would have been a great trade. It's not what happened though. So the stock pulls back. Let's say that we take a loss on it. Well, this big red candle tells me that this stock is weak. And so now it's on my radar. You got me once. There is material news that came out. This was not some kind of mamby-pamby news item that came out. This was material. It impacted future earnings. Okay? This is not some little analyst downgrade or some garbage like that. And you can see how it took some major moving averages and some support levels out of in the process of doing that. And now it can't get back up through this 200 day moving average. And when the market was going sideways, this stock was actually drifting lower. Well, guess what? On this little breakdown right in there, there is where you make more money than you lost on that bullish put spread here. And so don't shy away from, gee, I got caught a little bit off guard by that news and, you know, a uh, bad trade. It wasn't any of that. I would do that trade over and over again. No, no problem. But now I've got new information. This new information is showing me a fantastic shorting opportunity. And the same could be true if you got caught in here. All right, we got new information right now. And whatever little stinger that we took in here is okay because I know as a trader, if this starts to play out, I've got movement, which is thank God we've got movement. I mean, we hadn't had any movement in here, just choppy back and forth horizontal trading as a directional trader. This stuff drives me nuts because I'm still in a holding pattern. Now I have a sign that I'm going to finally get some movement both ways. Okay, we got buyers are still looking to buy dips in here because they see this as a potential opportunity. So they're going to be engaged. We got sellers who are saying, hey, we want to take profits. So they're going to be engaged and the market's going to go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And they're going to get some decent intraday trading ranges. So I think day trading could be back. And ultimately, either this high is going to be breached and we're going to get some follow through or we're going to see that lower high double top. And we're going to get some decent movement on the downside. So I'm cool either way because this long red candle tells me that I've had to be patient for a while. I've had to be waiting, but a move is coming. And I stood, should still see some great day trading opportunities. So that's just something that you want to keep in mind. I know that uh, losses are always tough when you're a trader. But as long as you're going through your system and you're going through your check boxes and you're making good decisions, you're going to get caught off guard from time to time on a move like that. But know that it's going to set up a future opportunity for you. And this one also could be setting up well for us. So those are some of the things that I'm looking at. I've gone through a lot of searches before I did uh, my reporting this morning. I was looking for what would I like on the bullish side. Is there anything that really 
captures my attention. Most of the stocks like RTX, this has been nice. It's been on our radar. We've been highlighting it for many weeks. Yeah, this is a beautiful breakout. It's getting away from that EMA8, so overextended. But yes, here would be a nice opportunity to enter. If you put LRSI, you probably had a really nice cross in there. So let's do it. Let's go M30 and see if we got the cross in there, which we did. And so here you can see that you had a low right in here, you had a trough right in here. This is not a bad entry point for a trade. You had a low here with LRSI, you had a cross here. This is a good entry point right here because this low is higher than this low. And you've got relative strength. So yeah, RTX has been good, but you'd have to set alert to try and uh, buy it. Energy stocks have been good. OXY, uh, you can go right down the energy stock list. I mean, these are all good. These are commodity stocks. Anything that's been commodity related has tended to have pretty decent charts to it. AA was another stock that was coming up, Alcoa. So one of the issues that we have right now is that we're heading into earnings season. We have to be very careful. We're kind of dancing around earnings releases. So if you're a short-term trader, you can trade some of those stocks. If we start getting a breakout to the upside, you can trade them on a short-term basis, very short-term, like overnight stock positions kind of thing. But for longer-term swing trades, we really have to keep it pretty tight because we don't want those positions to span any earnings announcements. So we kind of got to look for stocks that aren't announcing soon. Uh, which takes most of the stocks out of play because they're really going to crank up the next two or three weeks. So energy stocks, I like. RTX, I like. You can see they're overextended from that EMA8. So no, I would not be buying them in here unless I get some kind of nice pullback to that EMA8. And there you can see earnings on 5.7, so about a month away on Oxy and some of the other energy stocks. It does give you a little bit of time to buy dips yet. MRO is nice. Uh, it's going to Green Royal Flush. Gold stocks have been really uh, moving higher. Gold has a nice breakout. I'm not a big gold bug, but it's got some pretty decent uh, price action to the upside. I didn't see anything that really grabbed my attention. And so what I'm going to tell you is going to <laughs> put you in a Pete's bearish camp. Pete is not bearish, okay? I'm just less bullish. And when I start flipping through a bunch of charts, all I'm looking for is I'm looking for some charts that look good, that have some follow through that have relative strength or relative weakness that are not overextended like this, okay? I'm looking for something that just kind of get getting going. And so I am gonna look on the bearish side and I'm going to go into a search and I'm gonna look for some breakdowns. And so I'm gonna go into breakdown times two. If I put up my trend lines, my automated trend lines, I'm gonna go into Intel this is a really nice breakdown and I've got some consistency. And here's the deal is the stock has been heading lower when the market still had not shown any kinks in the armor. This stock was already selling off. So yes, I like Intel moving lower. Here's a pretty good tell. What did the market do on Friday? Put up the five minute chart. Market bounced from that deep decline all day. Okay, what did Intel do? Wham, sold off and could not recover even though the market had bounced. All right, that's a nice bearish pick. We've also got some breakdowns in here. We've got that trend line that was breached. The 200 day moving average has been breached. I've got a longer term trend line coming into play that I'm going to respect. Touch, touch touch. This is a legitimate trend line right in here. So I need to see that breached with that kind of conviction. And then yes, around that 3750 level, I think that would be a decent place to short. So what do we do with that information? 
Well, we take a look and uh, let's call it if the stock is below uh, maybe 38, I'd like to get a, and we'll see what the low was, 38.51. So I'm just gonna right click, I'm gonna create alert. I'm gonna go in, create a price alert. So it's just based on the price of the underlying itself. And I'm gonna use $38 as a initial alert and that's added. So now if the stock comes down to this trend line, I wanna see it, I wanna see what happens to the stock at that price level. Starbucks, all right, well, what do I know? Again, here is some new information. That bullish put spread on McDonald's. Well, if McDonald's is not selling as many hamburgers, and this is a consumer product, it looks like people might not be paying $7 for a cup of coffee anymore either. They're starting to maybe cut back a little bit. So this stock is breaking through some major horizontal trend lines, and it has been weak relative to the market for a long time. I like Starbucks as a short. Starbucks is going to be my pick to short. Now this is a bumpy, choppy stock. You can see the volume here has been pretty good the last few days. And there you can see on an M15 basis that the volume has been pretty decent intraday and the selling pressure has been steady. I am looking for nice, tight, orderly price action and I have it in Starbucks well before the market sold off. And that's what it did Thursday, continued to drift lower. So what do I do with LRSI? I'll do it on a 15 minute basis. Stock is a little choppy. You can see it has LRSI peaks and troughs on a 15 minute basis. So when I get the next LRSI peak right up here, I want the stock to be lower than this price. So stock pulls back, has a little bit of a bounce. This high is lower than this high, and that will be my opportunity to enter the trade. And I'll be looking for the market to have tried to get up to this resistance level and fail. And now all of a sudden we start testing the lower end of this long red candle. Then I'll know I can take some shorts with confidence because I'm seeing signs of resistance in the market. And I have a very weak stock that has already shown me that before there was any market weakness, there was weakness in the stock. So if I just have some market resistance to lean on, then I don't have to worry about a big market breakout to the upside and the stock participating in that market rally and sympathy. Oh, no, no, no. A lid is on the market. And this stock is already weak. And if the market happens to sell off a little bit, the sellers are already here lined up and they will get more aggressive and they will sell this stock off. That's how we do it couple of new features that we're going to be releasing. I want to go through those very quickly. I really love this one. This is historical IV. We're measuring as far back as we have the data. So this data is going to build over time, but we've got at least a quarter for most stocks. And here you can see what the historical implied volatility for Starbucks has done. It's currently at a level of about 23 when an option IV is below 35. I am a premium buyer I want to buy in the money, put options with a very high delta, 0.7 or higher, and I want to go out in time as far as I can. Very important. Three months, four months, go out in time. Do not buy weekly options. Those are exposed to time decay. Those are the ones we want to be selling. Okay, but super important. 
Well, Pete, I'm not going to be in the train for three months. I'm only going to be in it for a week. So I'm going to buy weeklies. That is not how you need to think about these, okay? Because this is a longer-term swing trade. We plan on being short this stock maybe for two or three or four weeks. We've got earnings coming up on the stock on 5-7. So you have a month to be in this. And by buying options that span that earnings date, they are going to retain their implied volatility and their time premium much better because of that uncertainty that will be surrounding that earnings announcement. So go out and buy way past this date. You can buy May 13, I think is a regular expiration date. So let's see what we've got there on Starbucks. Uh, May 17th options is what you'd wanna buy. Go deep in the money, get those high deltas. As soon as I tell you that, yeah, I like the May 90 puts for 510, all of you are gonna be in there first thing Monday morning. You're gonna ignore everything I said about LRSI, waiting for that LRSI above 80, making sure that that spike is lower than the prior, prior spike in LRSI. You're gonna ignore everything that I told you about the market and waiting for confirmation that there are signs of resistance and that we're taking out the low from Thursday. You're gonna ignore all that. Pete told me he likes the $90 puts in May on Starbucks, so I'm gonna go out, I'm gonna buy them before everybody else gets them. That's how retail traders think. If you wanna lose money, keep thinking like other retail traders. If you wanna make money, you've got to start thinking like institutions and you have to be patient. So use some of your common sense. Don't rush in. Look for this window to set up and then you're gonna be in good shape. That's how we trade. So this option IV study is really nice. I'll just go in and take a look at Intel very quickly. There you can see the option IVs are above 35. So here you'd be a little bit more inclined to maybe be a premium seller, but you can see they're starting to increase after a period of price compression. And now we've got a breakdown. So Intel's kind of in that, uh, you just short the stock also. But again, this is a major trend line here. So very long-term trend line. I would respect this and I would expect a bounce off of that trend line. So that's why I'm not shorting Intel. I do like uh, this historical IV study. There's another study that I've added. And here you can see how the orange dot signifies that the option implied volatility is starting to increase in the underlying stock without a corresponding increase in the stock's historical volatility itself. So we're comp comparing the stock's volatility to the options implied volatility. And when those two start to spread out, it is a sign of uncertainty and oftentimes a sign of danger. So this is just a study that helps us know that there could be something on the horizon that we're not aware of, that's not scheduled, that uh, could be pending litigation. It could be a clinical trial for a company. I would find these to be more relevant, these orange dots to be more relevant for biotech companies, uh, for any kind of technology company than for a stodgy old company like, you know, McDonald's or 3M or somebody that makes a pretty normal product. It's just showing you that the option implied volatilities are starting to increase. And we're going to see a lot more of these orange dots in the course of the next two weeks because we have earnings coming up. So of course, option implied volatilities are going to be increasing into, in, increasing into earnings announcements without a corresponding increase in the stock's volatility. That's how it happens. There's uncertainty coming into play. So this would just be another warning sign that you'll have available to you. I'm going to show you another feature that we're going to be adding. We've already added it. We're going to be doing a new version release soon. I love these column layouts. So this is how I have my columns set up, but I have different column layouts set up for my 
sector ETF. So I'm going to bring up some ETF charts. And so you can have a variety of different chart column, or excuse me, column layouts for your watch lists. And so I'm going to right click on the column layout, go into edit columns. And there you're going to see template. Well, you'll be able to name and save different templates. And I'm going to load up LRSI state. And I can see what all those variables are. I'm going to click OK. And so this will make it very easy for you to load different column layouts that you've saved. Some of them you may have for shorter time frames for day trading. Some of them you may have for longer swing types of trades. And so now you can load those very easily. So that's another really nice feature that we're going to be adding on the next version release. So we'll kind of conclude with that. We've got uh, some other nice things that we're going to be adding as well. Very long video, very important video. This is how we trade. So we go with the current information that we have until the market tells us that conditions are changing. In here, we're not guessing that this is going to be a market top. In here, we're not guessing that this is going to be a market top. In here, we're not guessing that this is going to be a market top. We're following this super, super, super strong trend. Ah, that was a warning sign. Now, all of a sudden, I am less bullish. Now, all of a sudden, I'm looking for a possible inflection point. I'm watching to see how these two sides interact and which side is going to win and prevail. And so I have one scenario where we could break out, but I'm not as expecting us to get as high as I would have previously because of that candle. And if we can't advance and we start taking out the low from Thursday, then that tells me that this selling pressure that I just saw here because of this super strong, long red candle stacked red candles M5 on massive volume. It's legitimate for whatever reason, doesn't matter. Institutions have deemed that this is a good time to start reducing risk. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just trying to follow their breadcrumbs. Those are the breadcrumbs they've laid for us. So let's see who has the upper hand in here. Let's watch the price action through earnings season for the next two or three weeks. We're going to have our answer in that timeline. So please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Then you'll never miss a beat and you'll know exactly how this story plays out and how we should be positioning ourselves. Thanks again. Good luck with your trading this week. We'll see you Wednesday for the live event. Thank you for watching this YouTube video. I'm Pete Stolzers and I'm going to keep the trade ideas coming along with lots of education. So make sure to subscribe to the channel and please turn on your notifications so that you never miss another trade. If you like the content, please give it a thumbs up. I've loaded two other videos that I think you're really going to enjoy. Stay tuned. We'll see you soon.